Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 20 of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, I'm gonna show you the top 10 effects plugins that come built in with Audacity that will help you to get your audio sounding the best that it can be. There are quite a lot of plugins that come with Audacity. I'm gonna show you which ones are worth your time and which ones you can safely ignore. So if you're unsure what a plugin is, it's a small piece of software that's added on to a larger piece of software, basically. So in the audio world, um, you have effects plugins, audio plugins, which you'll find in the menu bar in the effects menu here. These are all the default plugins that come with Audacity. They're in the Nyquist format. You can download extra ones to do different, different things, um, but pretty much all your basic needs will be covered here. And in no particular order, I'm going to go through my top 10 favorite ones, the, the 10 that I think you'll find the most useful for your audio work. So at number 10, we have the reverse effect. You find the reverse effect under the effects menu and down here at reverse. Now what this does is any audio that's selected, it's gonna flip it around and reverse it. Very simple plugin, um, but, but it can be really useful, especially if you're making some interesting effects for your music and things like that, and maybe some interesting effects just to go, go on in your sound design. Um, so if we just listen to what we've got here, it's just a standard crash sample. But if you reverse this by highlighting the whole thing, or if it's the only track you've got, you can just do Control or Command A. You go into Effect, Reverse, and then very quickly uh, and easily it just flips it around. So if you listen now. So we can make the, all these cool sound effects. And next up, at number nine, we have the fade in and fade out effect. It's a really simple way of adding fade ins and fade outs. Now we've gone through the envelope tool before in, previ in a previous video, which you can use to make detailed fade ins and fade outs, but it's a little bit, it takes a little bit longer. Um, if you know you just want a simple, quick fade out at the end of your music or at the end or beginning of a piece of intro or outro music, then you can just highlight the bit that you where you want the fade to start and end then go into effect and you've got these two separate separate effects here and then it will do a nice smooth Boy. fade out for you And at number eight, we've got the click removal effect. This one is really useful in editing. If you're editing two pieces of music together um, and you end up with a kind of a, a click in the middle where the break is, or if you're uh, editing some dialogue and you've got these lip smacks and, and clicks and things in there, um, but you don't want to completely delete the audio. You just want it to be a little bit less harsh. You can highlight the click in question. Let's just listen to it first. And then go to effect click removal and you can set the sensitivity and, and max spike width, but let's just leave it the default for now. And it drops that click right down. So it's still there. It's just a little bit less harsh, a little bit quieter. If you want to be doing normalizing and things without clipping, uh, this is great for just removing those really high peaks and now allowing you to normalize without clipping. At number seven, we've got the limiter. This effect is typically used during the mastering stage, sometimes during the mixing stage. Um, basically what it does is it increases the level of your audio uh, without it going over a certain point. So it's great for, for getting those, uh, those tracks ready for streaming and for CD. Now you're probably not gonna be doing much professional mastering using Audacity, uh, but it's still great just to give your uh, audio a, a boost in level. Uh, and make sure it doesn't go over any any limits that, that your streaming service might impose. So to use it, we're just gonna highlight the whole track, the, the stereo song, go to effect and find limiter at the bottom here. And you can set it to a hard limit or a soft limit, so it depends if you want any uh, any of the audio to go over the over the threshold. So we can limit it to say minus three to so it can try and prevent any uh, any audio from going over minus three dB. And we're gonna set how much we're gonna boost it by, let's just say five decibels. Click OK. And there you've given it's given it a nice boost. And it shouldn't really be be clipping. You shouldn't get any of this nasty distortion. Think that it's time to make a change. Yeah, so it's not clipping at all. You'd you'd definitely be able to tell if it was going over the zero dB mark. Um it's obviously gone over 
uh, over minus five there. It's not the most um, it's not the most effective limiter out there. Some of the more premium doors will have better limiters, but it does the job. It gets your music on your audio nice and loud. And number six, we have the compressor. It's a really important um, effects plugin that you'll be using across the board, no matter what you're going to be mixing in Audacity, whether it's vocals, music, compression is really important for reducing the, the, the loudest parts and increasing the amplitude of the quieter parts just to get everything smoothed out. Just a quick demonstration. We've got the whole piece of music selected, go to effect and then compressor. So we can set the threshold to say minus 10 decibels. So any audio that goes over minus 10 is going to be compressed, going to be reduced in level by whatever you've set the ratio as. So if you keep an eye on those peaks there, when I click OK, and you can see it's, it's brought down a lot of those peaks. I'm not going to go too much into deal of the mixing process, but it takes some practice and some ear training to figure out, to, to listen back and, and know if, if anything's too compressed or or, or not compressed enough. It's sounding smooth. Um, it's sounding a little bit over compressed. So, so we'd go into the settings and, and change a few things around. But it, like I said, it is a really, uh, really essential plugin. And number five, we have the filter curve, the most useful EQ that Audacity has to offer. Um, if we select some audio and go into effect and then filter curve, we can see we've got a, a full range EQ that will allow us to boost and decrease certain parts of the frequency spectrum. So at the top, we've got the treble, the highs, and we've got the mids in the middle and the lows or the bass uh, at the bottom. So just to give you a demonstration, if we listen to, we flatten that, set it to default and listen back to the audio. Everyone's suddenly needing to buy a microphone and learn how to use it. And what the filter curve, the EQ can do is allow you to add extra warmth um, to, to vocals by, by boosting some of the low end. Everyone's suddenly needing to buy a microphone and learn how to use it. You can use it to carve out certain frequencies if, if you've got a poor quality recording or if there's something going on in the room, um, you can use it to cut out certain frequencies. Uh, to make it sound more professional and pleasant to listen to. Along with compression, EQ is one of the most important plugins or effects for making your audio sound more professional, more pleasant to listen to and more balanced. And at number four, we have noise reduction, a really useful tool that Audacity is known for. It allows you to remove nasty noise, white noise or, or background uh, hums and things like that from your audio. If you leave them in, it will make your audio sound unpleasant to listen to uh, and it's very effective at removing that. You simply highlight a piece of noise and click get noise profile so that it knows what it's removing. Uh, and then you can edit the sensitivity and, and the amount that it's being reduced by and it will help to clear out some of that noise. If you're too harsh with it, it can negatively affect the recording itself, especially if the noise is very loud. But it's about getting the best blend and, and working with what you have. And at number three, we have truncate silence. You'll find this again in the effects menu under truncate silence. And what this does is really quickly uh, remove or reduce the amount of silence and dead air in your recordings. So if you're quickly editing a, a single track podcast, you can highlight all of the audio, go to effect, truncate silence, and then make a few changes to the settings. So anything under 40 decibels here, it's gonna treat as silence and it's gonna truncate that or shorten it to half a second. Or you can go lower than that, say 0.3 seconds, for example, and then see what happens. So that's cut out all the silence while still leaving a 0.3 second gap in between the audio so it doesn't start merging all together as one. And at number two, we have the Amplify plugin. This is really useful. I use this to this day, even though most of my work goes on in, in Pro Tools. If I just want to quickly change the level of, of a piece of audio, I can load up Audacity nice and quickly, open up or, um, Amplify, and then you can either de-amplify it by, by however many decibels you've set or amplify it. So say you have a dialogue recording and they've been a bit too far away from the mic or they've just been talking really quietly at the beginning there, you can highlight that section and say, increase it by two dB, click OK, and you've got a nice simple amplification there. And then if you find another piece, you can just highlight it and do Control or Command R to repeat and then apply that across the board. And it works in the same way if you want to 
decrease the level of the audio. And last, but certainly not least, we have the normalize effect. Now again, this is one that Audacity is known for. Just a really simple normalize effect. Just a really simple normalize tool that changes the amplitude of a piece of audio depending on how loud you want it to go. So if you go to effect and then normalize, we can normalize the peak amplitude to a certain number of decibels. And what that means is nothing's gonna go higher than minus 0.3 but it's going to increase the amplitude so that it, it, it reaches that level. Those are my top 10 plugins included in Audacity. Don't feel that you have to use them all, just use what you need. And of course, feel free to experiment with the others. You can also go on the Audacity website and try out some of the extra downloadable ones they have on there. But for your basic needs, these are the 10 that you're probably going to be using the most. And the next part, part 21, is the final video in the Audacity Accelerator course. I'm going to share with you something super useful that you can download for free, that you can keep to hand to help you with your audacity going forward. I'll also sum up what you've learned in the course and give you some, some links of where you can get more advice and info going forward. And if you haven't already done so, then hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when that video releases. Leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below what is your favorite go-to plugin in Audacity. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 21.